Yeg Jimash. Back in 2006, a man named Sasha Baron Cohen make a very funny movie film called Borat. It is about a very sexy and handsome journalist who comes from Kazakhstan to greatest country in the world, USNA, and he run around making fool of himself and others on camera for fun and profit. And now, 14 years later, completely out of nowhere, Borat is back in USNA along with his daughter Tutar to embarrass more people on camera. This is Borat's subsequent movie film, uh... Oh, what is rest? Borat's subsequent movie film deliver a prodigious bribe to regi- wait, wait, no, shit. Borat's subsequent movie film delivery of prodigious bribe to American regime for make benefit once glorious nation of Kazakhstan. I give movie zero stars because title is too long. Okay, enough of that. So, way back in 2006, I went into Borat not really knowing what to expect. I think I may have seen a little bit of Ali G here and there, but I wasn't really all that familiar with the character. And I thought it was the funniest goddamn thing I'd ever seen in my life. What Baron Cohen did with that character was just brilliant and hilarious, and I loved it. And now, 14 years later, we suddenly have a sequel. And who exactly was asking for this? No, seriously, who? Who was it? I need to find out so I can buy them all of the beers, because once again, I am laughing my ass off. And once again, Borat is not coming to USNA alone. Last time, he was accompanied by Azamat, played by Ken Division. This time, Division is not coming along for the ride. Instead, Borat brings along his daughter, Tutar, played by Maria Bakalova. And what a find! Oh my god, she was amazing! She is exactly... What you would expect Borat's daughter to be like, she was just perfect. They could not have cast that part better. I don't know how they found her, but well done. And I was surprised at just how sweet their relationship actually turned out to be. It doesn't start out that way, mind you, but over the course of the movie, the plot, if you can call it that, if a Borat movie has a plot, is basically Borat and his daughter just finally learning to understand each other. And it's, it's done remarkably well. And it was also kind of fun to learn that some of the bizarre incidents that popped up in the news over the last year could actually be explained by this movie. I think most people knew about that alt-right rally that he infiltrated a few months ago. It was like, Hillary Clinton, what we gonna do? Lock her up like we used to do. And yeah, there were other incidents like that. And now we know, oh, that was Borat. And what really makes this funny isn't just the performance, although he is very good at playing Borat, and it's a fun character to impersonate. I mean, who among us has not said at one time or another, my wife, and Maria is hilarious as Tutor as well. Again, how did they find her? But what really gets me is the things he is able to convince other people to do. I mean, the cake. Oh my god. Just... That blew me away. Like, how? How does he do this? And it is fascinating to watch how different people react to Borat and Tutar. There were a few in particular that stood out to me. One was the guy at the Pregnancy Crisis Center, or whatever the hell it was called. It's one of those places that poses as an abortion clinic, but it's actually run by a bunch of religious zealots that are trying to convince you not to have an abortion. And, oh, they trolled that guy so hard, and God bless him. And there's a bit where Borat leaves Tutar with a babysitter, and oh my god, I love her. That woman has a heart of solid gold, and just the words of encouragement that she gives to Tutar was just very touching. An unusually touching moment in this very silly movie. And of course, the two older ladies in the synagogue, who were just incredibly patient when Borat walks in wearing that horribly offensive Jewish costume, and... I mean, they, they did not freak out at all. They didn't raise their voices. They were very calm. They fed him soup. I just, I was wondering, how can they possibly be so calm and restrained in the presence of this asshole? And then they pointed out that one of them had survived the Holocaust. And then it made sense to me, because I imagine if you survive a traumatic event on that level, there's probably not much that phases you. Some jackass walks into your synagogue wearing a horribly offensive costume and you're like, oh, is it Tuesday? And speaking of the Jewish jokes that are scattered throughout both movies, at the time when Borat came out, my thought was, oh, well, Sasha's Jewish, so of course he can get away with it. And now, 14 years later, now that I'm older and allegedly wiser, I realize that's not entirely true. 
I'm sure it helps, of course, but the reason he gets away with it is because when he's telling those anti-Semitic jokes, the Jews are not actually the target. The anti-Semites are the target. That's who he's making fun of. And that's the difference between Borat and, let's say, Cartman. Sasha Baron Cohen made Borat a bigot to highlight the stupidity of bigotry. Parker and Stone made Cartman a bigot because they thought it was funny. Now, as far as how Borat's subsequent movie film, yada yada yada, compares to the original Borat, I think the original was maybe a little bit better. Because most people know who Borat is nowadays, he had to play several different characters throughout the movie in order to trick people, and because he moves around so much and plays so many different characters, the movie feels, I think, a little more disjointed as a result. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised to find out some of the bits in this movie were just leftover ideas from Who is America. And as far as the bit with Rudy Giuliani, I can't very well talk about this movie without at least mentioning that. I think it would have had a lot more impact if I had actually been surprised by it. But unfortunately, it had been spoiled on the internet ahead of time. So by the time we got to that scene, I was like, okay, here it comes. And there it went. And yeah, it's pretty much that quick. And considering all the stupid shit Rudy has done in the last couple of months, I am no longer that impressed that they fooled him. It seems like the only thing you have to do to get Rudy to say something stupid on camera is to just point a camera at him. The rest will take care of itself. Overall, I give Borat's subsequent movie film a rating of very nice. It's funny, it's entertaining, and pretty sweet at times as well, and I enjoyed it very much. It's definitely worth a watch, especially if you were a fan of the first movie. And that's all I have to say about Borat's subsequent movie film. Till next time, take care.